Hands on with LG's 34 inch 5K 2K ultra wide nano IPS display. Is it worth it? Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So here it is folks, the highly anticipated LG ultra wide monitor 34 inch 21 by 9 widescreen display. We are going to talk about this right now. This, of course, was revealed at CES 2018. It won awards and all that at CES. And if you've been following me on Twitter, you know I have lamented about how long it's taken for LG to finally release this. Well, they did, and it is available for purchase right now. Of course, that's good timing with the Mac Mini and the new MacBook Air just released as well. So we're going to unbox this thing, check it out, and tell you if this ultra wide monitor may be a good investment for you in your particular workflow. So here it is, 34 inches diagonal, a very, very wide monitor. We'll get right back to that. Let's go ahead and unwrap everything else. Here is the base stand. It is comprised of aluminum and you can see those little rubber pads on the bottom to help keep your monitor steady on your desk. And you can see a nice little thumb screw here that allows you to quickly lock it into place with the monitor arm, which is right here. Now this monitor arm also easily connects to the rear of the LG ultra wide display and it has tilt built in. So now let's go ahead and connect the base to the monitor arm and you can see how easy that is. Just turn the little thumb screw like that and we're locked into place. So flip it upside down and let's go to the accessory box here and see what's inside. So we have a whole bunch of different cables. Of course you have your Thunderbolt 3 cable. This is a two meter cable which should give you plenty of slack to connect to your Mac. You also have a power cable. Notice no unsightly power brick, which is nice. You also have a cable management tool that snaps onto the monitor arm and you have a display port cable. Notice a little 5K tag there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And you have a USB uplink cable. This is a USB B connector and a USB A connector and a whole bunch of documentation in here as well. And can anyone tell me what this is? I've seen those before, but I don't know what they are. Uh, yeah, so anyway, let's talk about connectivity on the back of the display. So you have a whole bunch here. Of course, you have your Thunderbolt 3 connection. You have DisplayPort, which is DisplayPort 1.4 compatible. And you also have two HDMI 2.0 ports. So that is not going to be something that you're going to want to use, though, on this display. We'll talk about why that is. You have a couple of USB-A ports and that USB-B connection, which gives you uplink via a USB connection to your Mac if you want to do that. Of course, you also have uplink via USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3. And that, of course, is the preferred connection that you want to use for this display. Of course, you also have a Kingsington lock down below as well. So if you want to attach or remove the display, you just press down a little button like that and it unlocks and snaps back into place. You can also mount it on a VESA arm if you want to do that. It's 100 by 100 compatible. Above the air vent on the back, you have an ambient light sensor on top of the housing. And thanks to the adjustable arm, you can raise or lower the display by 110 millimeters. So depending on your desk height and your just overall desktop configuration, that can be handy. Very useful to be able to lower or raise that. It can also tilt by 15 degrees forward and negative five degrees backwards like this. So again, it's all about getting that perfect viewing angle. And to make sure that the display is level on your desk, you can also adjust left and right just a hair like this. So just in case your, your desktop is a little unleveled, you can get the monitor leveled out just right. Now let's look at some other features of this display. On the bottom, you have a little joystick button, and this is used to adjust volume and to adjust all other settings on the display. There's just one button and it does everything. So it's a four-way joystick and you can also press in on it to confirm any changes that you make. Now there's also a pair of five watt speakers on the left and right side of the display. And as usual for a display, they're pretty terrible, but they get the job done in a pinch. All right, so here is the LG 34WK95U. That is a very long model number, but that's what it is. Again, the 5K 2K ultra wide. Uh, it's funny because LG changed the marketing from the 5K ultra wide to the 5K 2K ultra wide. We'll discuss why that is in a little bit. Okay, so let's get it all connected to our 2018 Mac Mini. By the way, if you haven't seen our 2018 Mac Mini review, make sure you watch it after this video and thumbs up if you've already seen it and enjoyed it. 
But now we're gonna talk about the meat and potatoes. That is a resolution. And really this is going to be the determining factor as to whether or not you should look into purchasing this display. Resolution, because that's what it's all about. And I mentioned that LG changed the marketing a little bit. Here is the default resolution. You wanna hold the option key when you click the scaled button and that will give you all the available resolution values here. And you can see the default resolution is 2560 by 1080, which is half of the native resolution on both the X and Y axis, which is 5120 by 2160. That gives you that nice retina view with super sharp text that's big enough to read. Now, let's compare the LG Ultra Wide to a true 5K display with 5120 by 2880 resolution. So as you can see, the LG Ultra Wide actually has less resolution than a true 5K display. You lose a lot of vertical resolution, so you can't even say that it's a lateral move between a 5K iMac, for instance, and this display. It's actually a downgrade with respect to pure resolution. But here's the thing, if you're coming from a UHD 4K display with 3840 by 2160 native resolution, the LG Ultra Wide 5K 2K display is actually a pretty big upgrade because you gain a lot of horizontal resolution. Notice this, this is the 4K view. Now let's expand it out to that LG Ultra Wide 5K 2K view and you get a lot more horizontal resolution, which is great for apps like Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so let's talk about some of these other display connections like HDMI. The short of it is this. If at all possible, avoid using HDMI connections with this display because it doesn't have enough bandwidth to provide full resolution output, native resolution output for this display. So you're gonna be stuck with a nasty looking 4K or less resolution, text is gonna look blurry, it's just not an ideal solution at all. So avoid HDMI if at all possible. If you can't use Thunderbolt 3 for your setup, use DisplayPort because it actually can provide full 5K resolution. So this is a good solution for eGPUs without Thunderbolt 3 pass through. But make no mistake about it, this is a Thunderbolt 3 display and as such, you really do derive a lot of benefits from using Thunderbolt 3. Obviously it's the ease of use, that single connection that does everything. The fact that you gain full resolution and it provides power. It delivers power to a MacBook Pro and it will charge that MacBook Pro, even the most specced out 15 inch model at full speed. So you can see I have my Thunderbolt 3 connection here, connected to the display, and I get full power delivery to my MacBook Air. And also you can use those USB-A ports on the back of the monitor with Thunderbolt 3, so you can actually access those. Now here's a downside. The 2018 MacBook Pro has some issues, the 15 inch model specifically. If you try to connect a 15 inch 2018 MacBook Pro with the AMD 560X GPU, you may run into some issues until it can get worked out between Apple and LG. If you go to LG's site, you will notice that lots of people are complaining about the 2018 MacBook Pro with the 560X GPU. Obviously, there's some problems, some handshaking issues going on between that particular MacBook Pro model and the LG Ultra Wide 5K 2K display. The good news is that if you kind of peruse through those reviews, you do see one review here that says it works great on the latest Mac OS 10.14.2 beta. I haven't tried that because I don't have a 2018 MacBook Pro anymore. Um, but hopefully that is the case and Apple and LG can get this worked out soon. Let's talk about build quality. This display has a very slim bezel, but you can see where the bezels meet. There's no molding on front covering those bezels. Uh, so it's kind of an eyesore to see where those bezels meet there. You see a little line. Also the build quality overall, it's pretty much all plastic, save the, the base stand. And because it's all plastic, the, the rear's plastic, the front's plastic, the arm's plastic. Everything's plastic except the base stand, and as a result, you get a lot of wobble when the stand is adjusted to its tallest height, as you can see here. Now, LG is certainly not the only display maker that makes their stuff out of plastic. A lot of display makers do. However, I hate the trend. I think it's so stupid. Just invest a few extra dollars to give us a metal arm at least so that we'd have some stability. That is plastic even though it's painted to look like metal, which is shameful in my opinion for a display that cost 14, 1500 bucks. Now to eliminate some of that wobble, you can 
push the stand all the way down to its lowest height, you get a lot less wobble in that case, as you can see there. Unfortunately, not everyone can work with this display set at its lowest height. A lot of people need to raise the display depending on their particular needs in their desktop setup. And as you raise it, that introduces more wobble. Now the good news is that with the Mac keyboard, I didn't notice much wobble as I typed. However, if you move at all on your desk, it is going to wobble this display and you're gonna notice it. I've used some third-party monitors with some absolutely terrible ways to control the settings, but LG really does a good job. They have that little joystick that we mentioned earlier that allows you to adjust quick settings on the fly. Of course, you can adjust volume, but you can go in, adjust picture mode, you can go in and adjust input, on a whim, just like this, it's super easy to control with that little joystick. Let's go into the full settings here and let's look at some of the settings offered. So you have quick settings, auto brightness, you have your input list, you can switch between inputs really quickly, HDMI 1, 2, DisplayPort, Thunderbolt, and you also have aspect ratio, so you can change that up. You have PBP, which allows you to run two inputs side by side which is really cool, something LG offers on its other displays as well. You have picture adjust, you can go in and adjust all sorts of different settings within that particular field. And you also have your general section for miscellaneous settings like USB upstream, you can set that to USB-C or USB-B. You have local dimming and this display does support local dimming I have confirmed although LG isn't very specific as far as how many zones. You have display ports, so you can set it to 1.1, 1.2, or 1.4 as well. You'll need to set it to 1.2 when connecting to your Mac via Thunderbolt 3, at least that's what I experienced here. Now let's talk about viewing angles and just overall display quality here. This is an IPS display and as such, you get those really nice viewing angles off axis. Now this is a semi-matte display, so it's not nearly as reflective as the 5K iMac display. However, I was a little bit disappointed with the anti-reflective properties. I thought they could have been even better on LG's display. LG employs the use of nano IPS technology. It applies nanometer sized particles to the screen's LED to absorb excess wavelengths of light. That in turn improves color, which allows this display to cover 98% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut. And I did confirm that it does support wide color. If you go to WebKit's website, they have a wide color test there and it did pass the display P3 wide color test that WebKit provides. It also supports local dimming, as I mentioned earlier. And as you can see, when this little ball moves around the screen, you see the different local dimming zones light up. There doesn't appear to be a lot of zones on this display, but they are there nonetheless, and that improves black levels because the rest of the display can remain darker than the portion that needs the light to light up whatever asset is on screen. So this will help improve contrast ratio, which LG rates at 1200 to one for its ultra wide 5K 2K. So should you purchase this display if you're looking for an ultra wide 21 by nine experience? Well, if you're coming from a 4K display, 3840 by 2160 resolution, this is a substantial upgrade when it comes to horizontal resolution. And as a result, you get a larger working area for apps like Final Cut Pro 10, which have those long horizontal timelines. But if you're coming from a true 5K display like the iMac Pro, the 5K iMac, or the LG Ultra Fine display, this is actually a downgrade in resolution. Although I do think it would make a good secondary monitor for that use case. But if you're upgrading from a 4K display, this thing is a serious upgrade. It provides much more horizontal space. So if you're working with apps that take advantage of that space, it can be a good investment for creative professionals. Just make sure you're okay with the build quality issues, you know, all that plastic, and also make sure you remember that 15 inch 2018 MacBook Pro users may have some problems until Apple and LG get that issue fixed. Thumbs up if you appreciated this video, subscribe for more videos like this, and let me know what you think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.